It's important once you get to the corporate to make your corporatomies small. I was taught to make them long. My corporatomy is only 1.5 centimeters. That corresponds to the widest part of the Titan implant, which would be the back of the implant. I've, also on this slide, you'll notice that I mentioned the dorsal nerves. The, uh, because I use an artificial erection, there's plenty of corporate to negotiate when you're placing your stay sutures. So it, you know, this is a thousand cases, but I got a couple thousand of these cases. I've never seen a case of glandular hyposthesia or anesthesia when, when performing it with the artificial erection, which is what I think gives you the ability to avoid those dorsal nerves. I don't know what the first thing that you guys put up and down the corporate when you start your procedure, but I, I was taught to use a Metzenbaum scissors, but at the same time I was taught to do a windsock. So I decided to use a furlough because it's a blunt instrument and I'm able to get my, my measurements and call them out to the back table where they're preparing my implant prior to, um, uh, yeah, prior to me moving on with the case. I also believe, and this will be part of this IRB study that we're looking at doing, that by not damaging that, that spongy tissue with the serial dilation that I, I used to perform, that we may end up having more sensate glands after the procedure. I was also taught to place the, uh, the reservoir in the space of retius. The space of retius, especially these days with all the radicals being done, you got an anastomosis, you got your deep epigastrics, if you have a guy with a cystoprostatectomy, it's an area where it's wrought with complications. So I started placing the reservoir behind the transversalis fascia. And if you look at this slide on the lower left side, there's a beautiful illustration of the three and a half inch nasal speculum that I used to, to place the, uh, the reservoir. And I think that we have a video here. Can you run this? When creating yeah. space for the reservoir. Can you turn the volume off on that? Yeah, thanks. Here, I, I, I initiate the, uh, the the space uh, by uh, first using a tonsil clamp where I perforate transversalis fascia at the level of the external inguinal ring. Once I'm in that inguinal ring, then I take the nasal speculum right there and I gently slide it underneath the transversalis fascia, drive it to the ipsilateral shoulder, you spread, and then you can see you can very quickly drop your reservoir in place. I already have a 60 cc reservoir prepared. Uh, because I, I see no reason to have any larger reservoir. If you have a guy with large cylinders, you should leave some fluid in the cylinders so that they don't claudicate their thinner muscle trying to pump up their implant. Uh, so that's already prepared on the back table. Does this go ahead now? Uh, the next step in my procedure is the rapid inflation of the implant. You can go ahead if, if you could play this. This is important because at this point you can see if your functional and cosmetic result for the implant is, is adequate if the, if the cylinders are at the mid glands. It also allows you to seat the back of the implant. And if you haven't done it for pubic approaches, that's probably the hardest part of this uh, procedure, which is seating the back of the implant. And that's by filling up the cylinders, it'll push the back of the implant down, especially somebody that's deep in the back. I also do not recommend using uh, a lot of rear tips because the, the weakest part of, of, of that implant is the junction between the rear tips and the cylinders. And the cylinders of the Titan implant, that's where you get the axial strength of that implant. So the fewer rear tip extenders that you utilize, the less hinging effect you're gonna get on the penis and the, much, the, the more anatomical your erection is gonna be. One of the other advantages I see with the infrapubic approach is that there's no incision on the scrotum. So my patients, day one, are starting to find their deflate mechanism. And we all know that that's what brings these guys back in our offices over and over again. So day one, they're figuring out what the deflate mechanism is, and you don't have to worry about having an incision on the, the scrotum. This is, I think, one of the last videos. And uh, whoop, no, I'm sorry, let's take that back. Can you play that? This is placement of an OTR pump. And uh, what, what we do here is I use the nasal speculum to perforate Collie's fascia inferiorly. And then regardless of handedness for the patient, the, the pump is placed in the middle of the scrotum, the most dependent portion of the scrotum. Um, it, I think that this one plays a little bit longer. You'll see that once the pump is in the scrotum, I'll pull the tubing, I'll pull the pump up to mid scrotum, and that allows me to have plenty of length on that tubing so you don't have to be fumbling and, I don't know about you guys, I got big thumbs, so uh, you'll see I, I pull it down to the most dependent portion of the scrotum where any right or left-handed patient will be able to at easily use the OTR pump. I'll pull it up to the mid-scrotum and then I'll make the, the 
connections. And then I, at the very end of this little clip, you'll see that it, but when you pull the pump back down into the scrotum, all the redundant tubing goes away. And that's very, very important in uh, uh, skinny patients because they could feel that tubing running over the, uh, over the pubic symphysis. It takes a little long to get to that point. But just believe me, it happens. <laughs> All right, I, finally, uh, how many people here drain, use a drain? Would that be about 50% maybe? Of, of the guys that come down to train in Miami, I, I've noticed probably about 25%, maybe 50% of guys will use a drain. I, like Dr. Siddiqui et al., uh, didn't, never understood the concept of retrograde migration of bacteria in a negative pressure system. That's a, that's a JP drain. And they showed quite nicely that there's no increased risk for infection when using a drain. And I've found that with my patients, they routinely will drain 75 to 150 cc's of what? Bradykinin producing blood products. So instead of the walk that they used to come in, not all of them are, are comfortable, but it's a, there's a significant difference in, in their post-operative course. The other advantage to having this infrapubic approach and having your corporotomies up top is everybody gets a 10-pound sandbag in the recovery room and for two hours. And if you find that the JP is filling up uh, and it continues to fill up, you just tell them to you know, keep that sandbag in place. Or if they're at home, they can put some books on the area. In conclusion, I'd like to say that the minimally, minimally invasive approach to penile implantation is safe, efficacious, and expedient. And I think that it should be taught in, a, in conjunction with the penile scrotal approach since both of them have such great strengths. Thank you very much.